Good morning and welcome to Blessed Community Church. My name is Linda and I'm delighted to welcome you here this morning. And thrilled to bits that in a very short while we're going to be led in some sung worship by Luke. And then we're going to hear from Billy Kennedy. Now, Billy oversees our church. He is um, the leader of Pioneer International. He's led our network in the UK for the last 10 years. Uh, and he's an incredibly humble man. He is uh, incredibly gifted in terms of his apostolic insight and input and investment into leaders and churches and networks. Um, and we're just thrilled to bits that he's able to bring a message to us this morning. He's going to be speaking from, from some of my favorite verses in Hebrews, Hebrews 11. Uh, and it's about pilgrimage uh, and about fixing our eyes on Jesus, the author and perfecter of our faith. Um, so I really pray that this morning we will be encouraged by all that he brings to us. Uh, and as we sing together and worship as Luke leads us, you know, let us really enable our voices and our sound of worship, our physical voices to fill our rooms, uh, to praise our amazing Jesus, to love our God, to express our worship to him today. So let us pray and invite the Holy Spirit to impact each and every one of us, uh, that this morning would be um, a very special time for all of us. Let's pray for that. Father God, we thank you for your amazing love and your commitment to us. We thank you for your love for us and the incredible adventure and pilgrimage we are on as we journey with you, as we walk with Jesus. We want to thank you that, Jesus, you are the author and perfecter of our faith. And in you, we trust and we lean upon and would you come and refresh us today? Would you come and touch us at the start of this academic year, which feels like the start of a new year for many of us, Lord, would you come and refresh us and speak to us and inspire us? We trust you, we love you. And would you feel as we hear the scriptures, fill our minds and our hearts with hope and truth and your love, this we pray in Jesus' precious name. Amen. Good morning, my name's Luke. It's a joy to be worshiping with you today. And I encourage us, wherever we are, let's sing out our praises to God. Let's sing loud, let's sing with boldness, let's sing with confidence as we worship God together. Bless the Lord, oh my soul, oh my soul, worship His holy name, yeah. Sing like never before, oh my soul, I worship Your holy name. sun comes up, it's a new day dawning, it's time to sing your song again, whatever may pass and whatever lies before me, let me be singing when the love and your soul to anger 
Your name is great and your heart is kind. For all your goodness I will keep on singing. Ten thousand reasons for my heart to find. We bless you, Lord, yeah. Bless the
heavens are roaring praise of your glory for you were raised to life again do you have no rival do you have no equal now and forever God you reign yours is the kingdom yes yours is the glory yours is the name above all names and what a powerful name it is what a powerful name it is the name of jesus christ my king what a powerful name it is nothing can stand again what a powerful name it is, the name of Jesus. What a powerful name it is, the name of Jesus. What a powerful name it is, the name of Jesus. Yeah. Oh, what a powerful name. What a powerful name. What a powerful name it is, what a powerful name it is, the name of Jesus Christ my King. What a powerful name it is, nothing can stand against, what a powerful name it is, the name of Jesus. So Lord, we press into all that you have for us today. Holy Spirit, we invite you to have your way amongst us. We ask it for your kingdom and for your glory. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Well, good morning, uh, everyone are blessed. Uh, it's nice to be able to uh, share some thoughts from the scriptures with you at this uh, strange and uh, unprecedented season we find ourselves in. Um, I want to read some verses from Hebrews uh, chapter 11, verse 1. Now, faith <clears throat> is the confidence in what we hope for and the assurance about what we do not see. This is what the ancients were commended for. By faith, we understand the universe was formed at God's command so that what is seen was not made out of what was visible. By faith, Abel brought God a better offering than Cain did. By faith, he was commended as righteous when God spoke well of his offerings. And by faith, Abel still speaks even though he is dead. By faith, Enoch was taken from this life so he did not experience death. He couldn't be found because God had taken him away. Before he was taken, he was commanded as one who pleased God, and without faith it is impossible to please God. Because anyone who comes to him must believe that he exists, and that he rewards those who earnestly seek him. By faith Noah, when warned about things not yet seen, in holy fear built an ark to save his family. By faith he condemned the world, and became an heir of righteousness that is in keeping with faith. By faith, Abraham, when called to, to go to a place he would later receive as his inheritance, obeyed and went, even though he did not know where he was going. By faith, he made his home in the promised land like a stranger in a foreign country. He lived in tents, as did Isaac and Jacob, who were heirs with him of the same promise. For he was looking for a city with foundations whose architect and builder is God. And by faith, even Sarah, who was past childbearing age, was unable to, to bear children because she considered him faithful, who has made the promise. And so from this one man, and he as good as dead, came descendants as numerous as the stars in the sky and as countless as the sands on the seashore. 
All these people were still living by faith when they died. They did not receive the things promised. They only saw them and welcomed them from a distance, admitting that they were foreigners and strangers on earth. People who say such things show that they are looking for a country of their own. If they had been thinking of the country they had left, they would have had opportunity to return. Instead, they were longing for a better country, a heavenly one. Therefore, God is not ashamed to be called their God, for he has prepared a city for them. I would like us to think about uh, this season that we're in, this uh, continued lockdown, these restrictions, uh, as, as more of a journey, as, if you like, a pilgrimage. Uh, to think about pilgrimage and being on a pilgrimage it is, is, is maybe different to the way we've looked at this current uh, season that we are, we are in. With pilgrimage, we move from what is familiar uh, to what is often unknown. Uh, as we read here about uh, the people of faith, and particularly with Abraham and Sarah, they they left their comfort of what they knew, what they were familiar with, and they were going some, <clears throat> somewhere, sitting out somewhere, uncertain as to what the future held. And so we find ourselves in this in-between time where we have left something that we knew that was familiar, that maybe we've grown comfortable with, to a new normal. Uh, we are getting glimpses of what that uh, could look like, but we're still uncertain in regards to the way our lives will unfold, uh, to the way the church will look. You know, lockdown is easing for m most of us. Shops have reopened, although our shopping experience is, is, is very different. Uh, the high street had been struggling, but as we return, there's no more for us Debenhams, Oasis, Beals, Carphone Warehouse, Kath Kitson, Laura Ashley, all gone. Schools will be reopening this week and next week, and, and they're going to look different. And I just spent a day with the Hope Community School in Southampton staff team exploring uh, what's going to happen next week, and we're having to innovate and be creative as to how we can engage and educate and support children and the families who are returning in the next few days. Uh, in churches, people are returning, um, looking different, uh, social distancing, uh, no singing, face masks. And so, so the normal isn't what we are used to and where we've come from. It's, it's, it's if you like this journey that we are on from what was known to, to what is yet to unfold fully. You know, the Bible is full of journeys. Uh, we, re we read here in Hebrews about the journeys of Abraham and the other heroes of faith. Uh, there was Israel's exodus uh, from Egypt. It slightly took longer than they anticipated in the, in the wilderness before they got to Israel. The journey of Joseph, Mary and baby Jesus in, down into Egypt from Israel. You know, the Bible's full of journeys. Now today, if I want to go on a journey, I, I, I simply get my Google Maps or my Apple Maps and I type in my destination and, and off I go. I know exactly where I'm headed and I know exactly when I'll arrive. It even adjusts the time depending upon traffic conditions. But... Abraham left his country and his people and his father's household on a word that God had given to him. Uncertain as to where exactly and how exactly it would look in the future. The wise men followed the star for two or three years searching for the newborn Jesus. Now the common ingredient in all of the journeys that we read about in the Bible is this faith. They, they had a faith in God and a trust in God. A faith that God would lead, that God would direct, that, that God would enable them to come to that place of new normal. You know, for many years, the practice of pilgrimage has been gaining in popularity uh, in the Western world in particular. Um, in look 
two, we see Jesus on a pilgrimage uh, with his family as they went to Jerusalem for one of the festivals. In, in, in Acts chapter two, we see pilgrims had come to Jerusalem for a festival of Pentecost from all over the then known world. Uh, this was the birthing of the New Testament church as these pilgrims gathered together. And so as the church grew across the world, so did the concept of pilgrimage. Um, we live near Winchester. That was a site of pilgrimage. Um, the many fantastic stories of people who journeyed there, who, who, who received healing and miracles on the way, or whether it's Walsingham or Canterbury, pilgrimage became popular. Um, apparently, uh, before he banned all pilgrimages in 1538, Henry VIII had a favourite pilgrimage just near where I'm standing right now. Uh, it was a short walk from St Mary's Church to another site, uh, literally half a mile away. And, and I think maybe the fact it was so short meant that he could do his penance uh, and and uh, and get some, some forgiveness uh, in quite a short period of time. And so pilgrimage then was lost, really, in the reformed world. But in recent years, it's begun to re-emerge. Uh, people travelling to Linda's Farm or, or taking the Pilgrim's Way or going to Teze or, or the most popular, the Camino de Santiago in northern Spain. In 1984, 400 pilgrims took that pilgrimage. Uh, last year, 278,000 people uh, walked the Camino de Santiago. So pilgrimage is becoming something that we are getting more familiar with, uh, particularly in the Western world. In his book um, called Sacred Travels, Recovering the Ancient Practice of Pilgrimage, Christian George wrote, the discipline of pilgrimage reminds us to slow down and take life one step at a time. It reminds us that life is an emotional, physical and spiritual journey that requires upward and inward conditioning. It moves us from certainty to dependence, from confidence to brokenness, and from assurance in ourselves to trust in God. So if we were to view this time as pilgrimage rather than frustration, I wonder what we might notice differently. You know, some of us are bored, some of us are stressed, some are busier than ever, some are Zoom weary. Uh, for others, not much has changed. Uh, for others, everything has changed. Some of us are anxious, some of us are scared, some of us are confused. But we are where we are. We can't speed up the process as much as we would like. We can't use Google Maps. We don't know our ETA, our expected time of arrival. We can't plan too far ahead. But what are we noticing in ourselves? What are we noticing around us on the journey? What are we aware of that we were not aware of before? What is God saying? What is God doing in us? I read another quote from a, a, an author called Eric Howell, which says this, Pilgrimage is a journey nearer to the heart of God and deeper into the life of God. The hope of all pilgrimage is realised when we have renewed eyes to be happily surprised by God's mysterious presence in all times and places, even at home. I love that. Renewed eyes to be happily surprised by God's mysterious presence in all times and places, even at home. We may not be able to travel very far, during this lockdown journey, this pilgrimage, but we can all pay attention with renewed eyes to what God is doing in us. You know, the heroes of faith in Hebrews chapter 11 were able to keep going because they had their eyes fixed on a heavenly destination. As Christians, we believe that there is an ultimate destination. We believe the risen Christ will return to mend what is broken, 
fully to fix what is dysfunctional, to bring an end to all injustice and inequality, to liberate all who are oppressed, to establish a new heaven and a new earth, the home of righteousness where God will be all in all. And everyone, every event, every matter, every thought is finally subject to the Lordship of Christ. This is where we are headed. And we work and we pray towards that end. Your kingdom come, your will be done. And then Paul says in 2 Corinthians chapter 4, Therefore, because of this hope that we have, because of this, if you like, ultimate destination, even though we don't know where we will be this time next year, where we will be by the end of the year, but because we are assured of our ultimate destination, which many of those in Hebrews chapter 11 never saw, never realized, it never materialized for them. Therefore, we do not lose heart, though outwardly we are wasting away, yet inwardly we are being renewed day by day. For our light and our momentary troubles are achieving for us an eternal glory that far outweighs them all. So we fix our eyes not on what is seen, but on what is unseen, since what is seen is temporary, but what is unseen is eternal. So let me encourage you all, my fellow pilgrims, uh, to fix our eyes, not on what we can see around us, not on the restrictions, the limitations, but let us fix our eyes on Jesus. Let us fix our eyes on the ultimate prize and the ultimate goal, and let's have an awareness uh, with renewed eyes as to what God is doing in us, what's around us, and how we can make the most of this season and this opportunity. I, I believe that we have a, the most amazing opportunity for some innovation, to see some things in, in fresh, fresh ways with fresh eyes. And I pray that each of us would make the most of the opportunity that presents itself to us uh, to move closer to God, to become more aware of what he's doing in us, to love our neighbours more effectively and more clearly, and to see what it is that God will do in us and through us. And so enjoy this pilgrimage, my friends. And may God bless you all. Bye for now. Thank you so much, Billy, for your message this morning. A real encouragement uh, for each and every one of us about our pilgrimage. I just love those verses in Hebrews and the opportunities for you and I to express our faith um, and to explore uh, with our neighbours, with our friends, uh, with our families. Um, these are in, in well, incredibly challenging times but opportune times as well uh, and we pray that father god through his holy spirit will empower us and give us all that we need uh, to remain resilient i'm just so mindful of friends who are in manchester leicestershire whereby they have had a prolonged sense of lockdown for the last six months and we are grateful to have had a little bit of a reprieve so you know to be able to travel around and be in one another's homes uh, with the restrictions um, in, in our gardens you know it's been a real blessing but we don't know what the future holds we don't know how long this is going to be possible for so there's a great uncertainty for all of us but this message about pilgrimage about us relying upon God um, about trusting in him um, and an opportunity for innovation well we lean upon God in this time and in in this season and we receive those words that Billy's brought to us so thank you Billy thank you for uh, Luke for all that you've led us in in terms of our sung worship which we really appreciate and value we miss gathering together um, to be able to sing and worship and wow it'll be amazing when we can do that again 
but there are great opportunities for us to dig into God in this season uh, with ourselves, with our households and our communities, um, and as a whole church community too. So just to say that we'll be releasing dates of when we're going to be gathering um, as a whole church community is blessed for live streaming and worship once a month over the next four months up to Christmas. Uh, and it'll be great for us to be able to gather uh, in that way and to be able to you know, send in words that we feel God is saying to us and to be able to participate together. We are also going to be updating about some of the changes. We are sensing God is moving us towards some of the practical arrangements that we are exploring currently. So please, 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 if you're part of BLESS and you're looking into BLESS, make BLESS time a priority this Monday evening. We'd love to see you. Uh, again, the dates and the details will be uh, on the link below. Come and join us. Um, we'd love to see you. Uh, and if you're not yet still subscribed to us, then just hit the link below and that will help you to keep up to date and in touch with all that we're doing here at BLESS. You're welcome to join us now by Zoom. Uh, again, just hit the link below. That'll take you directly uh, towards us gathering and we'll unpack further and more all that Billy's brought to us this morning. So we pray every blessing on you. Uh, would you know God's uh, encouragement? Uh, and if you don't join us by Zoom, do not worry. Just know God's blessing uh, and his closeness for each and every one of us uh, in this time, uh, in this season. This we pray in Jesus' precious name. Amen.